Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. My name's Alex and I'll be covering this week's Wednesday widget. This week's project is this cool faceted part, inspired by a project Amish of SS CAD Cam did to cover up his ugly doorbell chime. Make sure to check that project out on his Instagram. But we had a bit of a different project in mind for this part. Together we'll walk through some cam in Fusion 360 to get some really cool surface finishes and textures on this part. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Before we jump into some fusion tips though, let's get rid of most of that extra material. I'm going to indicate the part in, and then do a 3D adaptive with our quarter inch flat end mill, tool 31, running it at 10,000 RPM, 2 thou feed per tooth, 50 thou width of cut, and a quarter inch depth of cut. After a quick finishing pass around the outside, we're going to switch to a 3 8 flat end mill and come in and machine off the left side of the stock past the vise. Originally, this was so we could do an op 2 and I could take the hat off of the back of the part, but since it's not really functional and it's just to show you the tool paths, we didn't end up filming that. An important thing to do when surfacing is to make sure your tool is always going to have a more or less constant tool pressure. So when we just did that adaptive with our quarter inch tool, it'll leave a bunch of stair steps on the part that you can pretty easily see. So this wouldn't leave an even tool pressure. We'd hit a stair and machine it and then hit a pocket where there wasn't any material. So to get rid of those stair steps and leave a more constant tool engagement, we would come in with another adaptive with our 3 16th ball end mill, which is also gonna be our surfacing tool to take care of this problem. We are running that ball end mill at 10,000 RPM, 2,000 speed per tooth, 25% of your tool diameter as your width of cut, and 100% as your depth of cut. And if you notice, this operation is actually going to leave one quadrant of our part completely untouched. And there's a good reason for this that we'll get into in just a little bit. Alright, if you open up Fusion 360 and go to the Cam tab, We'll take a look at our first operation. If you watched our video on the Mitsubishi shift lever or our Modvice tolerance gauge, you've probably seen this one before. Using a ball end mill, you can apply this cool fake knurled texture to your part. And this is why we left one quadrant of our part untouched by the ball end mill when we did our second half of the roughing. Is because when we do this knurl, we want as much material as we can left so that our knurl stands out further and gives it more of a texture. So if we edit this toolpath, you'll see that we have a 3 16th ball and mill running at 10,000 RPM and 2,000 feet per tooth under the tool tab. Move over to the geometry tab and you'll set your machining boundary to selection and we'll pick this quadrant which I have this part split up into and this is just a sketch. So you'll select quadrant and set the tool to center on boundary and this will make sure it stays within that quadrant and doesn't roll over into another one. And we're also going to go down and use the avoid touch surfaces feature for these outside edges because we already finished those so the tool coming up and over and down along the side of the part wouldn't do us any good and it would just waste time. Finally we'll move over to the passes tab and the important part here is that you check add perpendicular passes. This will give you the two directional pass and give you that knurled pattern instead of just a striped pattern. The other thing I did was change my pass direction to 45 degrees and all this did was offset my passes by 45 degrees so that all my lines weren't going in line with the squares on the part. And this is just an aesthetic thing. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Another cool thing you can do if you don't want your knurls to be perfect squares is to uncheck add perpendicular passes, set your pass direction to say 60 degrees, and then we can exit out of that toolpath and we're going to duplicate it. Now, we'll, the only thing we're going to change in this one is our pass direction, and we'll set this to say 30, and that will give us more of a diamond knurling pattern as opposed to the perfect squares we had with the perpendicular passes checked. Now that we've got that all cammed up, let's jump into the machine and see how it works.
in our next quadrant, we're going to be using another parallel. The difference is this is just to show you a really nice surface finish. So we're going to open it up and go to our tool tab. You can see we're using a 3 16th ball end mill, running it at 10,000 RPM and a thou and a half feed per tooth. Moving to the geometry tab, we'll select our machining boundary and set it to selection. And we'll select this next quadrant. Make sure it's set to tool center on boundary. And again, we're going to set our avoid touch surfaces at the bottom. The last critical thing to set for this toolpath is our step over under the passes tab. And I have this set to seven and a half thou. Now we can switch over to the machine and take a look. Okay, so this surface finish is pretty good, but I do think it could have turned out better. I think one thing that would have helped a little bit was to set our pass direction to 45 degrees again, just so the tool wasn't moving in line with all the other features of the part. It would have made it a little less noticeable that you can see those lines along the surface. But I also think that since it's a smaller tool, we should have reduced our step over just a little bit. If we were using a larger tool, like a 3 8 end mill, and it would have fit in this part, those peaks and valleys would have been a little less prominent because as your tool diameter goes down, your step over needs to as well to maintain the same surface finish. For this next one, we'll be using a spiral toolpath, which we're going to use as more of a texturing toolpath as opposed to a finishing toolpath like we used in the last quadrant. So let's open the toolpath by double clicking on it and you'll see it open to our tool page where we are using a 3 16th ball end mill at 10,000 RPM and a thou and a half feet per tooth. Moving on to the geometry tab, and in this tab there's one more step that we have to complete that is different from the other two that we just did. We have to select a center point because the spiral is going to radiate out from one point. So for this, I selected the point in the dead center of the four squares in this quadrant. We'll set our machining boundary to selection and we'll select our quadrant that we're in and make sure we set the tool to center on boundary. The last thing we need to set is our step over, which is under the passes tab. I have this set to 20 thousandths. The larger this is, the more texture you're going to get and the further apart your tool is going to go between spirals. The smaller you make it, the more of a finishing toolpath this becomes as opposed to a texturing toolpath. That's all set up, let's see how it looks. For our last quadrant, we're going to be using a radial toolpath, and this is fairly similar to the spiral toolpath, whereas it radiates out from a single point that you select, except this one, instead of being a spiral going out from your point, it's a set of lines going out in a circle or set angle from the point you select. Double click to open up to the tool tab, where you'll see again we're using our 3 16th ball end mill at 10,000 RPM and a thou and a half feed per tooth. Moving on to the geometry tab, we're again going to set our center point dead center in the middle of our quadrant between the four squares. We'll change our machining boundary to selection, select the quadrant we're in, and make sure our tool is set to center on boundary. The way this toolpath differs from the spiral toolpath is instead of setting a step over, we're going to set an angular step degree under the passes tab. And again, the smaller you make this, the more of a finishing toolpath this becomes and the better your surface finish is going to be. And the larger you make it, the more of a texture you're going to get out of it. So I set my angular step to one and a half degrees to give us just a little bit of texture and it should be ready to run.
overall, I think the part turned out really good. I wish that our parallel surface finish would have come out just a little bit better, but I'm still happy with it. And hopefully you were all able to learn something too. If you want more practice, be sure to check out our website for the CAD and CAM file downloads. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on NYC CNC.